Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for giving us all your time this evening. Um, as Ben's given the perfect introduction, really. So I work for the charity Pennies. Uh, for those of you that aren't aware of us, we are on a mission to protect and grow micro donations in the UK, Europe and beyond. And when I say micro donations, I mean this new way of giving that we're all increasingly used to, where when you're shopping online or on a car machine in store and it asks you if you want to top up or round up your order, that's us basically. We're, we're the people asking you for that money. So I, I apologize, but we'll say thank you for, for donating at the same time. Um, and I'm also joined by the amazing Gopal, who is the CTA of Freddie's Flowers and an amazing supporter of our charity. Um, and as Feta, that's the person you're actually interested in hearing from this evening. So I will do my best to kind of whiz through my slides. Um, and then we'll hand over to Gapel to explain what we've been doing with Stripe Connect. Um, but really in a nutshell, as a charity, we try and make it as easy as possible for retailers to get involved. And this year we've done something really exciting with Stripe Connect that now makes it, it's never been easier to offer, offer micro donations as a business. So to kind of explain what Pennies is, this is the easiest way of, of kind of showing you. So as I say, whenever you're kind of shopping online or in store, you'll be used to now being given the option to just round up your order and give a few pennies to charity. We as an organization do everything we can to make it as easy as possible for retailers to get involved and give their customers this option. And we try to do that in three clear ways. The first is we try and make the tech as easy as possible. So online, we have a free to use API and increasingly we're working with all the e-com platforms. So this year for the first time, we launched this Shopify Plus extension. Um, and we also have extensions for Adobe and Magento and, and Salesforce as well. In store, we work really hard to partner with all the big payment providers, all the card systems, uh, all the EPOS systems. So they have really easy kind of integrations and configurable options for, for their customers as well. But the other thing we do is we help all our retailers navigate the weird and wonderful world of charity law. So we take care of all the due diligence, the governance, um, we wrap all of that up to us as simple as possible. And we also do all the grant making on behalf of, of our retailers. So from like a compliance and regulation point of view, that makes things a lot more straightforward. Um, but the third thing we do where I say we bring the biggest value is that we are just a super passionate single issue organization. So for us, the tech is just step one. With all of our partners, once they're live, we work really hard with them to make sure they're engaging their colleagues, their customers and building kind of bespoke marketing plans to make sure they're driving as many donations as possible. In terms of impact to date, we are currently live with over 130 different brands across retail and hospitality. Collectively, those brands have enabled their customers to donate just over 235 million times. And that's collectively raised more than 57 million pounds, which has now gone out to over a thousand different charities. So the clue is very much in the name of pennies. Uh, our average donation is currently 24p, but when that's donated almost a quarter of a billion times, the impact is, is absolutely phenomenal. And that's very much our ethos as a charity. We want everyone to be able to give a little instead of a few people giving a lot. Um, and yeah, excitingly, it's, it's always the retailer's choice what charity they nominate and where the donations go. Uh, we've now granted out to a thousand different charities. Um, excitingly and quite terrifyingly for a charity of 15 people, someone is donating via one of our solutions every 0.6 seconds. Um, and we're now available in, in over 15,000 storefronts across the UK and Europe. Um, and I've just shared this slide. It's slightly out of date now, but just to kind of give you a sense of the kind of breadth of different brands and businesses involved. Um, really excitingly, it will hopefully be this week or maybe next week, we should be going live with Fabergé. Um, so then I will officially be able to say we are live with everyone from Poundland to Fabergé. So it is proven at both ends of the high street. Um, and that's because we can bespoke the donation arts, we can, we can bespoke the, the kind of proposition to each of our brands. Um, but I also just really love to show this, you know, some major kind of enterprise businesses like Poundland and Screwfix. Uh, we rolled out the soup drug for the first time uh, this year. We're currently piloting with Burger King. We do seasonal campaigns with Lidl. So we're really confident that our tech and solutions are proven in, in kind of high transaction environments. Um, and then if I may, I can obviously talk about pennies until I'm blue in the face, but I just want to share this video um, from another kind of shared customer, uh, another Strike customer in Poundland. Um, and this is an impact video we worked on with Poundland and, and one of their charity partners this year. But I just think it helps 
bring it to life the impact we can have. Several years ago, Evie was diagnosed with a very rare genetic disease that only seven people in the world had ever been diagnosed with. No, her, her speech would then start going and her mobility would worsen and her body effectively start shutting down on her. Make-A-Wish kindly granted Evie's wish to meet Father Christmas. It was just truly magical. The, the detail that they went to to make sure every single child had the best weekend they could have was, was unbelievable. The, and whatever the future holds for Evie, we will still have the memories. One of the wonderful things about Granny's is its ability to capture micro-nerve donations that can add up to a huge difference to charities such as ourselves. We've been working with Powerland for the past seven years, and Powerland uh, provide grants to us provide a foundation uh, and their ability to do so has been significantly improved by the contribution that Pronies is making through their stores and at the same time to facilitate a conversation between their staff and customers about what it is that the Ballard Foundation is contributing to charities such as ourselves. Personally and uh, my team we feel very proud to work for a business that puts the needs of others at the center of what we do. The benefits of, of pennies, it just makes things very, very easy, very simple. And it goes alongside our values as a, as a company. So we raised 2.5 million, and that comes from almost 10 million donations. So uh, to our Penland Foundation, it's almost 2 million pounds that was donated. The micro donation movement across the UK really is something special. And it's something that Poundland and the Poundland Foundation are really proud to be a part of. Every single one of those pennies donated at checkout really does add up to make a massive difference. Yeah, absolutely push that button to, to round, round up that 10 or 20p because those small donations added together make a huge impact. And I've seen personally and firsthand the impact it can make for our family and, and other families in a similar situation. Cool. Amazing. Thank you. So 25p is that donation and it's pretty cool. That's been in two years, over 2.5 million pounds raised. So it does show you the power when you are asked to the checkout, if you just want to add that little donation, it is really achieving amazing stuff. Um, but I promise we will get onto the relevant bit and the Stripe Connect bit very soon. But first, I'd just like to spotlight all the amazing work we've been doing with Freddy's Flowers. Um, now we've been live with Freddy's Flowers for, for a little while now. Um, but Freddy's Flowers has been a pioneer, pioneering partner for us and has done a, a first for us on a couple of things now. Um, and they're actually the first partner to add pennies into a subscription journey. Um, now, the way we approached this was we effectively did kind of a soft launch just in the back end. So only existing customers could see the donation option. Um, we launched this very cautiously. We didn't do any kind of marketing or any promotion of it. Um, but despite that, their customers still actively sort it out and donated over 70,000 times, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and that's already raised almost 15,000 pounds, which is doing amazing stuff with, with Dementia Adventure. Um, and excitingly, literally in the last couple of weeks, we are now AD testing um, the full penny solution in the, in the front end, which we which will go on to show you shortly. Um, and I will very shortly be handing over to Gay Paul. But I do just want to embarrass him before I hand over. Because um, as a charity, we are completely dependent on our partners and, and on our supporters. And every year we host the Pennies Awards where we recognize our partners, both retailers and tech partners. But our most popular award every year is our Unsung Hero Award, where just individuals go above and beyond um, and effectively you know, do implementations for us on top of their, their day job. Um, and Gay Paul very deservedly won that award this year. So there we go. As I said, I just wanted to embarrass him. There we go. Yeah. Oh. Um, but before I hand over, I just wanted to do kind of a quick demonstration so you can see it in action, which might be risky. Um, but here we go. And I just kind of want to explain to you the kind of the use case behind why we needed to use Stripe Connect. Because the way Penny's traditionally works, 
whether it's online or in-store, you'll be presented with a very simple donation option before you go on to pay. Um, but in this case, and in all cases, if you choose to add the donation, that donation is added to the overall order. So the donation and the customer's order is processed in one payment and one authorization, and the donation is settled into the merchant's bank account. And in the past, we've had to effectively manually reconcile that donation from the merchant. We effectively invoice them for it. It comes back to pennies, and then we grant it out on their behalf. Um, so just explaining that, you can understand why that is a bit of a pain point. Um, but that's where we're really excited to now be working with Freddy's Flowers and Stripe on our first, what we're calling a split settlement solution. Uh, but I will now hand back to Gabe to properly explain that. <laughs> so as you already hear like uh, what Freddy's does Freddy's actually like is not unlike normal e-commerce we do like subscriptions as our main so we used to do we deliver like weekly flower subscriptions to customers homes that means like customer only comes at once and subscribe say I want weekly flowers or a fortnightly flowers and then at that time we capture the option of like if they were, are willing to actually donate as part of that their donate uh, thing and then we save that as a payment method. And when we're actually charging the customer on a weekly basis or whenever they got a delivery, we actually pass that information. So we call like a new API call like, it is like offline mode. We got like another manual transfer way. Each time when we charge, we also call like a this transfer API. Say like out of that total transaction, send this 20p to the Stripe. So if you actually look back to Anna's presentation, so here, Freddy's Flowers account actually works as a platform. And then that 20p goes to Penny's account, which is connected up to our Stripe. And then remaining amount automatically goes to our account. This is for the subscription. This was our core journey, our core uh, sub, our platform of Freddy's. And later, in last year, around last year, we also launched gifting. In that, like, I uh, will show, like, where we actually off started offering uh, one-off purchases from our customers. So this changed. And then recently we launched recently, like very recently, we launched uh, Penny's charity as part of the uh, gifting journey too. As part of that, now I don't need to call like another separate API. Instead, we'll be calling the same payment API as part of the settlement. And then we pass like which connected account, how much we are sending it. It automatically does it. Instead of I call again, like say like 20, 20p transfer to pennies are remaining one set to my account. So this is really straight forward. Now, whenever we got it, like, obviously, like, I, I need to call out, like, Raj from Stripe really helped and easy to actually set up there. So also, like, remaining a Stripe solution after, it's really easy and straightforward there. Yeah, that's all for me. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. Have you any questions for Rob or GoPal? Don't be shy. Yes. Go to you first. Have you, did you say you've launched it on the front end yet for like new, have you seen it affect conversion rates for you guys? Having that extra widget there for pennies? So I that's, guess that's a question for, but yeah. Yeah, I'd say to, well, I guess I can give mine the first bet. So um, we're, we're deliberately AB testing it mm -hmm. to, to get that data. Um, and it's something we work all our econ partners, all our in-store partners, we always do like a pilot first, get the data. Cause ultimately our whole kind of philosophy is if the sale doesn't go, if, if the sale doesn't go through, the donation doesn't go through. So, you know, we don't want to do any harm. We don't want to cause any negative impacts on any kind of commercial data. Um, and mentioning those kind of enterprise brands, like if we had any kind of negative impact, they just simply wouldn't still be live with us. So exactly. But, um. That, that's my answer. I'll hand over to Kate for to give the, yeah. So we, we are doing the AB testing and so far from the early results, we're not seeing any negative effect. In fact, we're actually seeing a little bit of positive effect there. Uh, I, I'm saying like really early and we don't have like stats, uh, significance of the results there yet. Yeah, my question is, do you guys get charged on the dominated amount as well for payment services? Um, yeah, so I mean, the way it does typically work is obviously the donations added to the the overall order. 
so the whole transaction is is subject to any kind of fees that the, the processor requires. Some of our payment partners do kind of waive those fees. Um, but yeah, that is that is kind of the nature of it. The whole point is kind of adding the donation into an existing transaction. Um, obviously, the 23p here and there, like it's, it's pretty minimal. Um, and a lot of our partners will cover that kind of as a, a cost of fundraising. I mean, they can technically probably offset it against their taxes as well as donation. I mean, potentially. It's not so we would actually advisable, but yeah, that is, there is potentially an element of that, yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? Yes. Um, really love the concept. Big thing that I always have is around gift aid. Um, is there kind of a system in place whereby I could register with you and then you would be able to gift aid all of those donations that I would be making? Or is that because 57 million, you're leaving 12 million on the table? Yeah, it's, it's a really great question. It's something that is definitely on our kind of longer term roadmap. Um, and we have had a few kind of historic conversations with HMRC yeah. around how we'd make that work. But really, again, our whole ethos is we actually pride ourselves on not collecting any customer data. So we've really tried to model ourselves on the old school charity collection tin. There's like completely anonymous. There's no kind of further commitment. You just give the donation. You feel good about it. You're not going to be chased to sign up to like a direct debit or more kind of commitment from the charity. So the way it's kind of been designed is to kind of actively not collect that customer data. Um, but we, we would love to kind of in the future to find quite an innovative solution about how we could still get that data in an anonymous way and enable gift aid. But um, yeah, that's definitely kind of longer term and would need, need the support of a few partners to make that happen. What percentage of um, customers for this online and subscription-based donation click actually on do it? And how does that compare to the in-store and one-off donation percentage? Yeah, really good question. So, I mean, typically online, we'd, we'd be pretty chuffed if they did a 10% conversion rate. Um, I, I'd say we probably average just below that, but we do have quite a few partners that exceed that. Um, our highest online conversion rate is 30%, um, but that is quite a unique case where it's effectively like a charity's website. Um, in-store is a bit more of a range, but part of what we bring is that wider partnership of like staff training, customer comms, making sure the marketing and stores are really on point. When all of that's in place and the partner's really engaged, top performing stores can do up to 50% conversion. So it is, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. But a lot of work goes into like, you know, if you just switched it on and didn't do any of the wider partnership stuff, in store, you're probably looking at about 10% as well. What percentage of the, of the, uh, donations well how does uh, pennies uh, work and uh, yeah in terms of like our operational model yeah so we are a charity we're, we're not for profit we're, we're not doing this to kind of make make money out of it we but it, our, it has costs that yeah of course so has we, to give, uh, we give our technology and our support away for free up front but we do receive a small share of each donation so a hundred percent of every donation goes to charity 90 percent to the retailers nominated charity and then we currently retain 10 percent but of that, it's entirely reinvested in operational costs, maintaining the API, developing Shopify apps. And the last time we had it independently assessed, for every pound we spend on ourselves, oh. we unlock a fare for £11.44 for the UK charity sector. <laughs> um, but we are actually committed to currently, we're halfway through a five-year business plan. When we get to the end of that, that'll be like our self-sustainability goal, because currently we also get like grant funding and stuff as well. And once we hit, hit that self-sustainability, We've made a commitment to our trustees that we'll lower our 10% to 9% to 8% to 7%. Um, and some of our enterprise partners, like, you know, where it's more like Super Drug and Little, where they raise millions and millions of pounds, we do kind of agree different percentages with them as well, because otherwise we're just taking far more than, than we'd need to. So, um, so, yeah, it's quite a long answer, 10% basically. Any more questions? Yes. Yeah, it's great. Um, from like a user experience perspective, it, this is not meant in a negative way at all, but are you seeing like the novelty wearing off? Because this has been a new concept in payments right in the last few years, and it's something we notice at checkout, 
or that's going to wear off at some stage. Yeah, I'd, I'd actually say the complete opposite. Say so our whole, um, again, our whole ethos is about just replicating the charity bucket and the collections in and ensuring that can continue in a kind of a digital age. And every year we do consumer research and we ask them, what's your preferred way to give? And still, even in this cashless age, putting money in a collection tin is still number one. Um, but I think even two years ago, micro donations weren't even on the list. Um, and in this year's research we're just about to release, micro donations is now number three. So I think if anything, with cost of living, inflation, everything else that's going on, I think consumers want to give like we're a very generous country but given those big one-off direct debits and um you know the ways we're kind of used to giving before are less affordable but being able to give 20p like one out of 10 times you go shopping like that is affordable and that is kind of sustainable so if anything we're we're kind of confident this movement's only really just begun and is going to continue to grow You, you mentioned that each organization has their own sponsored charity. To what extent have you considered or looked at having organizations sponsor multiple charities so that customers could potentially look to donate to one charity that they're interested in, but not another? Yeah. So what, well, in terms of having like multiple choices and either multiple choices or just for repeat customers having a different option to show up at checkout every time? Yeah, it's something I say for us as well, more from like a commercial UX point of view, we try and simplify as much as possible. So we'd never recommend really having like too much to choose from. Cause again, you just want to either click it or ignore it and just kind of proceed with the order. Um, I'd say in like the vast majority of cases, the businesses we're working with already have very long standard committed charitable partnerships. Um, and more often than not, they come to us and say, yeah, it's the same with Freddy's, like they're already working with Dementia Adventure and they're like, we're doing this for Dementia Adventure. Um, it's also important to say as a charity ourselves that we, we pride ourselves on saying neutral, of course. So like we, we never want to like promote one charity over the other. Um, the only thing we are exploring though is looking at more of like an, an SME model. Um, cause currently like a lot of the brands we work with do need to meet certain thresholds or need to be like a certain size just, just to make it work from our perspective. Um. But we are kind of looking at whether we could do more of like a universal model where kind of smaller businesses, you know, they might be a bit more restricting. So like the, the payment provider might say, these are our 10 charity partners. If you want to sign up, your customers can donate to them. Um, but that's something we've not quite cracked yet. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Seems fantastic what you guys are doing. Um, my question was actually quite similar to yours, actually. So you covered most of it. Um, I'll just think in terms of the other charities that, um, look at or focus on, is it mainly UK charities or do you look at, um, so say if a, a business sponsored a charity that was international, um, how do you guys, uh, deal with that or we'll do settlements for that? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, currently the way it works is the charity needs to be registered in the same kind of territory as the business that we're working with. Um, but there's also a lot of kind of, um, international charities that will still be kind of registered in, in one domain. So I'd say the best kind of example is that with the, the DEC appeal, so for recently with, um, the hurricane in Turkey, but then also the humanitarian relief in Ukraine, uh, we've actually worked quite strategically with them. So we had a lot of partners come to us kind of overnight and say, you know, we want to support the DEC campaign. And then we'd help them kind of switch where I think we did about 15 over a weekend. Um, and you know, then they're all switched in support of like a, an international campaign and appeal. But yeah, but from a governance point of view, the charity needs to have some form of legal entity in the same territory that the, the, um, the company's based in. Yeah. 